The Twin Cities nonprofit has taken in tens of millions of dollars since the murder of George Floyd. The Minnesota Freedom Fund gained global attention from Kamala Harris before she became vice president and by a tweet from Justin Timberlake asking for donations. A windfall of money followed. The group pays bail and immigration bonds for those who can't afford it. But some have questioned the group's accountability. Only on WCCO, Jennifer Merrily spoke with the group's new leadership in their first on-camera interview. The mission itself really aligned with who I was as a person. Uh, I know what it feels like to have your freedom um, taken away. Since March, Minnesota Freedom Fund has been led by Maria Seja Orozco, an immigration attorney, and Eliza Darris, a formerly incarcerated youth who most recently worked with the ACLU. They wore masks during the interview, saying it's safer since they're in and out of jails paying bails. We are a revolving fund. Maria served on the board when the world witnessed the death of George Floyd. She saw the influx of funds that followed. It was overwhelming, and, and overwhelming in a way that is is quite scary because you also realize that there's an immense level of responsibility that comes with that donation. The nonprofit's budget ballooned from $230,000 a year to nearly $42 million in 2020. In the year that followed, the group says it spent $15 million to pay bail for 1,349 people. Very public cases made headlines in Minnesota and beyond. Instances where people bailed out by the Freedom Fund were then accused of committing another crime, sometimes violent, in one case, murder. The last thing we would want is for someone to be harmed. It is a tragedy when that happens, and for us, you know, we take that to heart and want to ensure that we are doing so the most responsible way while also preserving the dignity of anyone who is accused of something. They note all but one case we referenced happened before they took over. In another previous instance, the Freedom Fund bailed out a man arrested for firing at Minneapolis police during unrest. A jury acquitted him last fall. In that time, in which he would have stayed detained, uh, he would have likely lost everything. Under this new leadership, we wanted to know what's changed. We've had to create policies, create departments, you know, have staff, have, you know, a checks and balance system internally as well for responsibility. We asked more about who they bail out. The vast majority of the people that we help are, are black and brown people that are within the metropolitan area. Most of the requests for help come from their website, from defense attorneys or family. They explained the process. We do have now set protocols and procedures um, that look at, at a wide range or totality of, of issues or concerns and looking at the community and looking at all of that together to make that determination. So this isn't a public safety analysis. This isn't, uh, is this a situation in which this person is a risk or this person isn't a risk? This is, can this person afford it or this, can this person not afford it? We asked for greater transparency. We wanted to know how many people have reoffended after being bailed out, how many cases were dismissed, or if a person was found innocent. They told me they don't disclose that information to maintain the privacy of their clients. Bail information is mostly private. A hard to access repayment document to the Freedom Fund is filed with the courts. Representative Paul Novotny wants the information to be public and easily accessible. And this is all information that's available. It's all collected. We just think it should be um, posted as part of the arrest records. Novotny intends to push forward a bill that would do that in this legislative session. The law enforcement veteran says a person is less likely to comply if they have nothing at stake. The concern would be that someone that has committed a crime of violence and has uh, their bail posted for them has no skin in the game. Um, they have no reason to respond to court hearings. More recently, the organization started tracking what happens after a person is bailed out and says it offers support through post-release programs, whether it be housing needs or a ride to court. Something that we realized was essential to the organization being responsive to the community to if we're claiming to support it, that we are also doing so in a responsible way. The executive directors tell me the nonprofit is currently working on a monthly bail budget of roughly $150,000 total. The goal, to end the cash bail system. And they tell me they are open to talking with the impacted communities. Jennifer Merrily, WCCO 4 News.
We reached out to the Hennepin and Ramsey County attorneys to ask if they think the Minnesota Freedom Fund hurts or helps the system. Mike Freeman declined to comment. The Ramsey County Attorney's Office acknowledged a problem with the current cash bail system, saying it is uh, working with our Sheriff's Office and other government stakeholders and the community to develop a process where people are detained pre-trial based on public safety risk rather than wealth.